In this video, we're going to be looking at the input-output model, which is a new part of MZ's analyst tool. Whereas traditionally the rest of the tool looks at historic and future projections within labour markets based on what's currently happening within the labour market, historic trends and current knowledge, what the input-output model does is it allows you to model in scenarios so that you can predict, for example, what would happen if a new school opened up in your area or if a business left your area. We all know that uh, regional economies are connected, they're intertwined. What benefits one area benefits another area. What benefits one company or industry benefits another industry. And likewise, if something hurts one industry, what hurt, it'll hurt another industry. And what the input-output model allows you to do is see those chains of cause and effect. If you add 100 jobs here, how many extra jobs does it create somewhere else? If you take away a company that's been adding in loads of jobs to the region, how does that damage the rest of the region's economy? Now obviously, this isn't just an academic exercise. This is key when you're trying to attract new businesses to your area, or when you're trying to model in the effects of something like uh, Brexit and the uncertainties involved thereof. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to talk you through how you can use the input-output model in a very simple way just to get some quick value from the tool. And then in future videos what we're going to do is we're going to look at more in-depth case studies and uses. So here, in, um, to find the input-output model, it's just the card labelled, unsurprisingly, the input-output model. And if you click on that, what you'll do is you'll come through to a table, uh, to a page with all these reports on. Now, as I said, in future videos we're going to be looking at things like industry supply chain and regional jobs, wages and sales. But for now, we're just going to focus on the top one, input-output scenario. And what you get when you come to this uh, input-output scenario is just like the rest of analysts, first of all you have to select your regional economy. And so in this case we're going to be using Basingstoke and Dean, but you would select whatever region, local authority, county, or even something bigger if you want to, to see what is the impact on that region and to see the links between various areas within that region. And then once you've selected the region where you want to model, then you need to add in four digit industries to that scenario. So this is basically, we've got a stand, the standard model is, here's how everything is at the moment. And then by adding in four digit industries to the scenario, for example, hospitals, what you do is it shows you the current number of jobs within hospitals at the moment and then you can change that number of jobs. So you could add in a thousand jobs, um, and that's what we're gonna do in this model. And if you wanted to take away a thousand jobs, you just put minus 1,000, it's that simple. So we're adding in a thousand jobs. Don't worry about this drop down for now, but it basically allows you to change the amount of wages or sales. But ignore that for now, we'll come on to it on a later video. And then what you see once you get to this page are two headline figures. You see, by adding in a thousand jobs, what does that actually change? How many extra jobs are created? In this case, we've added in a thousand jobs, but another 188 jobs have been created off the back of that. And we can dig into that in more detail in a second. But it will also create 32 million pounds worth of additional wages. And so what we're going to look at, as with anything else in analysts, if you see a blue bar, especially one with a little plus sign, what you can do is you can click on that to see more information about that number. And we're going to look at these three blue bars, change in jobs, change in wages, and show job distribution, just to show you what this tool can tell you. So the first one is change in jobs. So we click on that, and what we see is this pie chart which gives us four pieces of data. And this could look really confusing, but I'm going to talk, it through, uh, talk you through how, what it means. So what we get first of all is the 1,000 initial jobs. So these are the jobs that we've added into this scenario. This is a hospital saying they're recruiting 1,000 new people. Then, so that's simple, that's just, that's just the green bar here. And then once we've done that, the next set of jobs is the direct jobs, say the 97, 97 jobs here. And these jobs are the jobs that are the supply chain from the hospital. So if you add in a thousand jobs from the hospital, all of a sudden you're going to need more care workers, more GPs, 
uh, you're going to be adding in jobs and the hospital is going to be spending that money on extra outpatient care for people in their homes, which wouldn't come under a hospital industry, but would come under another industry. And so that's 97 jobs added in. And that's that, I don't know, teal line there, teal segment. And then what we see after that, that's the direct jobs, is the indirect jobs. And these are, to put it simply, the supply chain supply chain. So this is the GP surgery needing to hire a, temp uh, a contracted cleaner, for example. Um, or the home, the care home worker who they need to hire a mechanic or a, use a garage so they can get all their sort of transport vehicles, ambulances fixed. Um, and so that's 20 jobs we see there. And then what we see finally is the 71 induced jobs. And this is a really interesting part of the puzzle. Because what we see here is basically if we add up these 1,097 and 20 jobs into one big number and look at the spending within that area, so we add up all their wages as well, and we put that into and we put them that the impact of that into a local economy. So you've all of a sudden got 1,117 people who are now spending money in this local economy. Now this won't be a direct industry supply chain, but what we'll see is just those people spending money in, say, Sainsbury's or Subway for lunch. That, in, that creates new jobs as well. These people will spend money on schools, on cinemas, and so all of a sudden 71 jobs are created through that. Now, if you've been watching along, what you might have seen is underneath each of these numbers is a multiplier. So you get there a multiplier of 1, a multiplier of 0.1, a multiplier of 0.02, and a multiplier of 0.07. And with each of those multipliers, they basically, there's one of these multipliers for every single industry and how it impacts other industries. And so by adding in any one industry, we can then combine that with various different variables to create these multipliers. And we'll talk more about them in, in other videos. So that's show the change in jobs. And now we're going to look at the next pie chart, which is the change in wages. And so here again, we get the same four things, initial, direct, indirect, and induced. So we see that by adding in a thousand jobs, we actually add in 27 million pounds worth of wages to the Basingstoke and Dean area. Now that will then come to 2.5 million worth of wages from the supply chain. So that's increased as well. And then we get 500,000 worth of weight increased wages from the indirect supply chain. And finally, another 1.7 million worth of wages from the induced supply chain. So when we go back off this, we can see that comes to 32 million worth of increased wages. So this is really valuable. These two numbers right now are really valuable for giving you a high level picture of what will a region be like, how much more money, how many more jobs will there be in this region if we add in these thousand jobs, or likewise if we take it away. And we'll look at a taking away scenario in a second. And so that's great, but the, the second question then comes, well, where, we, where are those jobs? We've said there are 188 new jobs created based on adding a thousand jobs in. Where are those jobs? And so what we can do here is we can just click and say show job distribution. And what you'll see here is where are those jobs created? 12 within manufacturing, sort of 30 within wholesale and retail trade and repair of motor vehicles, sort of 20 within STEM activities, 32 within admin areas, 14 within education, and so on and so on. We can see the breakdown of those jobs. And this is all very well and good for showing you roughly which sectors will benefit. But you might again want to go down a level further. And you'll see here we've got the industry jobs, wages and sales detail. And in this video we're just going to click on the industry jobs detail. And that will give us this report which shows every single SOC code. And this is slightly overwhelming, especially when we look and we see lots of zeros. But we're going to just go and scroll up to the top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sort via the direct. So as we said, here's, here we see the hospital supply chain. Who 
which jobs are created by the hospital adding in a thousand jobs. And so we see 11 jobs are created in temporary employment activities, five in retail, five in cleaning, four in engineering, and so on and so on. And we can see the indirect ones, and we can sort by the induced as well to see where the induced um, jobs are created, hospitals, primary education, general secondary education. And that's interesting. We can see, uh, especially if you look at the hospitals, by adding in a thousand jobs in hospitals, those have created other jobs directly and indirect and in induced in hospitals by just increasing the number of people employed within an economy. And so this is really the first thing we want to show you, which is the level of detail that this tool can go into. When you've got a business that's growing in your area, you can show and you can see how other businesses will need to grow and will be encouraged to grow in order to support that business. But what we can also do with this tool, if we go back to the input output model where we were to begin with, um, go back to this scenario here, is we can take jobs away from an area. So in this example, let's suppose that a big computer consultancy company uh, decide to leave the area and they decide to take 500 jobs with them and they move somewhere else so computer consultancy and then we just take away so we minus and then we put 500 jobs and then we click run what will be the impact of that to the area so those 500 jobs will mean that ultimately we see 630 jobs lost and here we again we can see the direct, indirect, and induced multipliers, and the and the resulting loss of wages. And once again, we can go through here and see how each individual area is is impacted. And so obviously now, information, health isn't impacted as much as it was obviously in the last one, but uh, we see admin and STEM are still up there. Wholesale again is massively impacted. And what this allows you to do is not just see when everything's going well, how your region can keep on growing, but when you start to lose industries, which are the other industries that are going to be suffering, who are going to be needing to be more adaptive to the times. And so what this tool allows you to do is not just model in good news when it comes, but also to plan ahead to model in bad news so that when, it, when things happen, you can be ready to show the impact that will have on your local economy. Now, this is the first of several training videos around the input-output model, and I'm aware there's a lot more in the tool that we haven't covered, but this allows you to give rough but accurate answers to questions of what will this in industry's growth or decline have on my region. And it's worth noting, we can add in multiple regions here. So we could add in, for example, Wiltshire as another local authority. And we could add in multiple industries. So we could add in hospitals growing by a thousand. And so here we've got this scenario where a hospital is growing by a thousand jobs. And yet computer consultancies are shrinking by a thousand jobs. And we can see the aggregate changes in wages here. So 8 million jobs are created, 8 million wages are created, 568 jobs. And here we see you lose 694 because of the change in computer consultancy, but you add in 1,000 jobs to hospitals. And what this does is it also demonstrates the impact different types of industries have on an area. So the fact that losing 500 jobs within computer consultancy takes away 24 million pounds worth of wages from a local region. Whereas adding in a thousand jobs in hospitals adds in 32 million. And so for, for half the number of jobs, this computer consultancy activity almost has the same amount of impact as adding in a thousand jobs in hospitals. And this is really helpful for you, allowing you to focus on which are the industries that are really key drivers to your local economy. As stated previously, this will be the first of several videos in input out, on the input output model tool. And don't hesitate to get in touch with your account manager if you have any questions about it.